Hey YouTube, my name is Numi, and today I was hoping to bring you uh, a pretty straightforward video of a, uh, of a trip on Delta, on Delta One between London Heathrow and New York JFK Kennedy Airport. But it didn't quite work out as straightforward as I had hoped. This facility only for Virgin Atlantic or Delta business class upper class. I do just want to say to Virgin Atlantic and Delta, if they happen to ever watch this video, that I really appreciate the drive-through check-in. I think it's one of the great things that distinguishes Virgin and Delta from other airlines at Heathrow. Over here, yeah. this breaking, so do my colleague here, we can't hear you. I'm going to open the barrier for you now, driver. <laughs> Sometimes you die, you know. It's unbelievable. Huh? Yeah. It's unbelievable. And it's all going to be on YouTube for all my viewers. So if you heard that, YouTubers, totally inept, totally inept service from Virgin and Delta Virgin, yeah. starting the morning. It's all recorded for my YouTubers. Oh, okay. Thousands <laughs> of people are going to be watching that bad, oh. bad entrance. <laughs> Great, that's what I needed. Virgin and Delta now share a private security lane, which was a little bit busier than usual this morning, unfortunately. Normally, there's nobody here at all. Today, everybody was there trying to get through security into the terminal. It is a very good service. It's normally pretty quick. There must have been some little hold-up. So going through the terminal at Heathrow uh, Terminal 3, uh, it's very much like going into your very own upmarket shopping centre. Um, it's still a mystery to me who buys all this stuff early in the morning on the way to different places. But all the big guys are there and, all, and a few of the little guys. Everything you want from champagne to caviar to oysters, anything you want first thing in the morning for most people have had their breakfast. The place that I always head to, uh, if I'm lucky enough to be traveling on uh, any kind of premium service, is the Virgin Clubhouse. So the Virgin Clubhouse is available for Delta One and upper class passengers, and uh, is not quite as amazing as it was previously, a few years ago, but the staff are very good, they're very friendly, the food is excellent, and compared to your average everyday run-of-the-mill uh, American lounge, uh, maybe the Admiral's Club or one of those kind of places. This is much, much, much nicer place to hang out. Um, they do full waitress service for uh, meals as well as having a buffet. So uh, if you want to order breakfast, you've got an extensive menu with pretty much everything on it, uh, healthy options and unhealthy options. And uh, I had the mango yoghurt pot and the fruit salad because I thought I'd be relatively good. Comes with uh, homemade granola and some honey. Fruit salad looks very appetising. Um, and generally everything in that clubhouse is going to be pretty good and prepared to order for you. So, it's a pretty grey, dreary London day at Heathrow Airport. Um, and uh, I think things have changed quite a lot with the partnership between Virgin and Delta. Things are a lot busier, there's a lot more flights, uh, it's not quite as you know, great service as it was uh, in years gone by. But on the other hand, that's, uh, that's the way the airline business seems to be going. And uh, Delta is a very, very good airline, and, uh, and Virgin tends to be pretty good as well. So in theory, Today is going to be a trip to New York on an Airbus A330. 
So uh, this is um, an interesting choice for a Delta flight because it has a brand new configuration of business class seats. You've got this kind of uh, all aisle access kind of pattern, nicer business class seat generally. And uh, my business class seat on this trip uh, is 2A, which uh, is a recommended uh, seat on this particular plane. Uh, it's right at the front. Doesn't really seem to have very much more room than any other business class seat. But um, I think they've made a good job at this and it feels much less cramped than it can do on the Boeing 767-300 or 767-400. So uh, all the things that you might expect are here on this plane. So you've got the uh, telephone handset, which I didn't use. You've got the, uh, the seat control, uh, which as, as you'll find out in a minute, I never used. And you've got a nice big uh, video display, which you press a button and push out. You've got uh, USB, you've got uh, an international travel socket and a headphone adapter. So uh, this is one of the things that I really wanted to do was to, uh, I booked this particular plane to try out these new seats on the A330. Uh, just to show you a little bit of the, uh, the welcome you get. So every seat, uh, I don't know whether they picked out me in particular, but there was a little card signed by the crew. You've got the, uh, the two me uh, Delta One pouch. You seem to get a different pouch going out and compared to coming back. The one on coming back has got a hard shell. And uh, get all the, all the little bits that go inside it. Uh, everything you might expect, I'm not going to go through all of them, will be inside the pouch. Delta One has its own menu, which is uh, very nicely printed with selections for spring. And uh, I did notice that uh, the last time, I think in March, I was on Delta One going out, um, it was a different menu. So they obviously rotate these menus as well. Um, I think the options were uh, different, even though the time of day was also uh, quite an early flight. So the one that I uh, that I ordered here was the pan-fried cod, but uh, as you'll get to see a little bit later in this video, I didn't end up uh, having the pleasure or not of eating my pan-fried cod. So what they tend to do is offer a few snacks. Uh, one of the nice things about Delta is the vanilla ice cream with chocolate fudge sauce and nuts, uh, which is... Uh, only served on Delta or maybe served on other American Airlines but it's a particularly a Delta thing and some interesting choices of wine as well. So the plane was readied for takeoff and uh, all the people boarded and uh, everything was all pretty normal and, uh, and that bit of it was completed uh, pretty well and uh, Everything seemed totally 100% normal about the flight at that point, but all was not going to go, unfortunately, according to plan this morning on uh, Delta, uh, Delta DL1 to uh, New York from Heathrow Airport. So, everything so far so good. Tax it out just preparing to start the engines, but unfortunately the engines didn't start. I guess maybe engines have a little starter button or starter motor the same as cars. And uh, unfortunately, the uh, magnificent A330 from Delta was towed back to the stand or to a remote stand to see whether an engineer could fix the errant starter motor. Gave me a little bit of time to take some nice time-lapse videos for this uh, this video and uh, watch the planes go up in the air but I, I probably spent close to uh, an hour and a half two hours just sitting on the tarmac with the plane going between stands and uh, repair and all this kind of stuff and uh, then I started to think uh, well, it's always a bad sign, isn't it, when you start looking back at the engine and the, uh, the cover is off and they're trying to fiddle with all the bits underneath. And uh, it didn't get any better. Um, I guess all the mechanics came out and shook their head and said, oh no, that doesn't look as if we can 
repair it and then pretty soon it was everybody out of the plane back onto the bus um, a lot of fed up Delta customers going back into the terminal fast forward a couple of hours and after a nice glass of champagne back in the Virgin Clubhouse um, I was put on to a Virgin flight because uh, Delta and Virgin are obviously close partners and uh, this one is a, uh, a Dreamliner um, 787 Model 9, I think. And this is the upper class uh, cabin. So these planes have got uh, three classes. They've got upper class, premium economy, and then economy. And uh, I think upper class is still pretty good, but it is beginning to date and become a little bit uncompetitive with some of the other airlines. Uh, who are now providing uh, first-class suites and uh, a little bit more kind of width and comfort. So, uh, I mean, it's still a pretty good service, don't get me wrong. It's uh, a lot better to be in upper class than it is to be in economy. So, and I'm very, very grateful to uh, Virgin for putting me into uh, the upper class seat on one of their planes and for getting me only a few hours late, ultimately, to New York. So while when I got up I was hoping to bring you a, uh, a nice little video of my journey to New York on Delta, uh, Delta One business class, uh, it turns out that what you're going to see is actually the Virgin Atlantic version of exactly the same journey in upper class. I think that uh, Virgin Atlantic had realised that their food and service Transatlantic had been falling down in recent years and uh, they did send me a survey talking about new menus and a new relaunch of food service. And I think they're going to be really ramping up uh, the quality of meals on Virgin Atlantic and if today is anything to go by they're already starting that process. Um, this starter was very good. The main course was about as good as meat can ever be when it's served up in the sky, so that was pretty good as well. The dessert was, uh, was also this kind of apple tarty thing, it was kind of nice. And, uh, and after all that, as if that wasn't enough, it followed with a little bit of cheese and biscuits and stuff. So generally pretty good, very happy with the food and the wine, uh, all pretty good. And uh, one of the things I liked about the seat particularly was that uh, they provide a nice uh, place to hang up your iPad to, uh, to watch movies if you don't want to use the Virgin Entertainment, and, uh, which, is, which is not too bad itself. So with just 10 minutes to go of this wonderful flight, you're welcome to join me to land at JFK on a very, very nasty, cloudy, cold morning.
Thank you. Thanks so much.